welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. Um, today we're going to go through the installation of the uh, Moonlight, uh, I believe it was the CHL uh, motorized focus here. <coughs> uh, received it yesterday. Uh, already did the uh, unboxing video. Uh, hopefully you've seen that. And uh, today we're going to get this thing onto the OTA and uh, with any luck test it out this afternoon. Um, I was going to wait until this weekend to do it but um, you know the projection is the clouds might break at uh, you know somewhere between 3 and 5 today so I'm going to go out there at 4 o'clock and uh, see what the conditions are and if it looks like might be able to get some testing in on this tonight. I'd love to get some imaging done, but you know, if I can at least get uh, this thing working with SGP, uh, I'll call it a win. And uh, you know, if I do get some imaging in, then it'll be a win-win. So um, I don't have the instruction sheets in front of me. I've already read through everything. I've already installed all my ASCOM drivers, so that I, and, I, and uh, SGP has it in the drop-down menus now. Um, so I'm not going to go through uh, the step-by-step, -step, you know, what's what's in there, uh, simply because this is already uh, a working setup. Uh, so we have the focal reducer on the back here, and then this extension tube um, with the T adapter for the Canon DSLR. Uh, this is an old XSI uh, DSLR that I just have up here as a dust cover, basically. I'm currently going through, and uh, you probably heard the little beep. Uh, you know, I'm going through and updating some darks right now, so with the actual imaging camera. Um, so this is basically to keep the dust out of the, uh, the optic train, which is basically would be from here to there. Uh, so that I don't have to keep, you know, I don't have to redo my flats. So uh, with that, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull off this extension tube and the focal redo, or not the focal, the uh, T adapter, T adapter. And um, what I want to do is I want to measure. Since this is a working train, uh, the back focus I believe is 148 millimeters. So I just need to make sure that from inside the flange here where it marries up onto the focal reducer to the mid plane of the travel is 140 millimeter. The best way to do that is to measure from the inside here up to here. So what I have there uh, for some other stuff I work on, I've got some nice digital uh, calipers, a uh, nice digital readout and uh, I'll use this to measure this, and then I will get uh, the I will get this to a midpoint and in the travel, and then measure how much distance I have at that point, and then I'll know which spacers to use. So that's the first step. So uh, we'll probably be speeding this up, and we'll be good to go. I also want to note, um, I also keep, you know, this is the focal reducers box. I like to keep uh, things like this simply because when I pull this off, I'm going to want to put a cover on there. Um, so in the box, I have the covers that came with the focal reducers, so I can just screw them back on, uh, keep, that, keep that dust out of here, and um, while I assemble this guy, so... Uh, <clears throat> okay, that's all ready to go. So, as you can see, we, you know, it's got a little bit of a movable flange. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove that. And I'm gonna remove the T-adapter which I might need uh, some Allen screws for. I shall return. All right, so 
So being a general handyman uh, around the house, that is, uh, I feel everybody should have a set of Allen Allen keys uh, in their toolbox at the house, especially if you're going to be doing stuff like this. Uh, I don't have a T handle one that is in this size, uh, but I definitely will be looking at getting one in the future. I believe I have the right size, so let's check that. It's the smallest size, which is uh, one and a half, maybe. Yep, one and a half. So we'll, we'll just get this removed and uh, you might not be able to see that on the screen there, but uh, it's. Looks to be about 96. Yep, about 96 uh, millimeters. So as long as I build the train to be about 96 millimeters, um, you know there can be a little bit of play there. This thing, I believe, has about an inch and a half worth of travel. Um, so we're going to try to get it right in the middle and we'll uh, we'll get it right around 96 obviously we're gonna have to do some extra stuff uh, because this is gonna screw in so this here this little uh, brace here would actually be the inner ring here so I'm gonna have to measure uh, how much that is and then uh, you know add that to the 96 and then, you know, simple, simple stuff if uh, you've ever done anything like this before. Uh, if you haven't, um, you know, it, it's definitely not within, outside the realm of uh, anybody's capability, that's for sure. So, I have it sitting here on my knee so it can be in the uh, camera's view. And, base, and all we need to do is make sure we're zeroed out. And then these calipers have this little uh, uh, pointy end that comes out. So you just simply put the, the that little point on the inner flange, and then take it down, and we are right around 10 millimeters. So. I know that from the back of this flange here to here is an additional 10 millimeters. So that's going to be 96 plus 10 or 106 millimeters when I build the train. So when I measure from the back here, I'll know 100 and 106. Uh, fully extended. I'm at 155, so I got plenty of room with these. And uh, let's uh, get back at it. So, comes with the uh, two inch compression ring already uh, screwed in. Uh, I'm sure that's because a lot of people have uh, utilized that either for visual or, or even Im uh, imaging uh, rigs. Um, very nice to have if I ever want to go a route like that, but since this is going to be a static uh, imaging rig, and for now I'm using the DSLR, I'm going to make sure everything is nice and uh, uh, screwed in, and I'm going to use the uh, recessed T adapter, and then the T adapter that I have, uh, yeah, T thread adapter, and then the actual T adapter itself. So I want to unlock it, lock it, and I just want to go through this travel. All right. So that is not much travel. How much did we have? 
So this is fully extended. Okay, let's take it all the way in. So it's just below the edge here. That's fully extended. Fully extended. It looks like we are at 89 millimeters. I put in the so that that clearly putting in that T-thread adapter that goes below that so we won't we know we need some uh, a spacer now again this is fully extended so we were let me double check we're at 89 millimeters and that is at 74 millimeters and I know this goes below that by a little bit. So 74, that's 14 millimeter uh, travel. So I'm going to back it off. Oh, 14 millimeter to the uh, flush. And then it goes another Looking at about 17, 18 millimeters worth of travel. Um, I thought it was more than that, though. I really thought it was more than that. hitting some type of a stop okay so um, so maybe I'm remembering wrong it might only be an inch worth of travel um, so but we have about 18 millimeters worth of uh, of travel so I'm gonna double check my measurement so, uh, 75 millimeter thickness. I want to want to bring this down to about an 84. You know, so let's bring this down a little bit. And I'm at 84. Okay, so I'm going to just. Just a touch more. Just a yeah, 84 and a quarter. You don't have to be ultra precise, uh, but yeah, 83, 83, seven. We're good. So I'm gonna lock that down. So now 83.7, so 84. We know that we need 106. So if we need, if we've got 87, and we need 106, and we need roughly 20. We need 19 millimeters worth of uh, uh, spacers. Clearly, that's too big. That's a two-inch spacer. 19 millimeters, it's going to be right around an inch, so maybe this guy right here, that's 25 millimeters, get the 
this up in the camera view, so uh, which may not have seen is uh, this longer one is actually three separate ones all screwed together. So I'm going to check the distance on the middle one here. And I'm seeing 12 and a half. And this one here is six and a half, so that ooh, that would that would get me my 19, right? Six and a half and 12 and a half. So let me screw these together, and then let's measure that. And we've got 18.9, I think. I think this is uh, the combination we need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread those. I'm going to thread those into the end here. our measurement. We're at 102. I'll throw in my adapter plate here. You remember I went to the top of this right here which is where this would have sat on top of um, so looking at that it's at the bottom of these threads there's some threads in there I probably can't see um, this was not a thread it was it used the little allen keys on the side so um, so to here, which would probably be about where this little uh, lock nut is, is where we sh probably should measure to. And that gets us to 106.1. So we're with, it, with right now this and the top of this little, little uh, ring right here is uh, 106 millimeters. Uh, we are within one millimeter. So let me see. Uh, clearly, that is not going to work. I think I might need a different. I need my other T ring. I have another one. Let me go get it, and I'll be right back. So, uh, they're identical T-rings, unfortunately. Uh, the only difference is this one has a little insert to screw onto a one and a quarter. Um, how am I going to get this to work? Let me try to take out these screws. There's these little screws that were on either side. So let me take those out. So the one that I had that had the little insert, so the one that was on here um, that used the Allen keys to hold it on into the little groove in the side um, didn't work. Uh, luckily I did have this other one that had the little insert, uh, I believe it's 48 millimeter insert. Uh, to go to um, to a one and a quarter inch uh, eyepiece holder. Uh, that one screwed on just fine. So 
since I have two, I can put this one back on. Let me just tighten it down. There's my Allen key. There's my Allen key. Let me just tighten this down real quick. So we know. So now we can measure from here to here. Let's see how close we are. So if I look there, I'm at. Let me get it a little bit more squared up. I'm at 107.7. Okay. Now, if we remember, we had this little area here. And that is 10 millimeter. So 107.7 plus 10, 117.7. Let's see where we're at. Struggling a little bit here. There we go. Now, I show a reading of 120.46 so we're two and a half three millimeter off uh, with 20 millimeters worth of uh, or 19 millimeters worth of travel uh, it should be well within the uh, the play um, you know the difference You know, that was roughly six millimeters, um, 19, Yeah, uh, I think this is, this is the setup we're going to have to go with. Um, so this was the uh, two smallest adapters. Again, this is to use my DSLR on the Edge HD 11 inch with the focal reducer. We need 148 millimeters, I believe. Uh, I'll put it somewhere over here if, uh, if that's incorrect, but I believe it's 148 millimeters worth of back focus. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're roughly mid plane, uh, mid travel. So to get to that 117, let's see, to get to 117, I need to back off just a hair. There we go. So hopefully you can see it in the video. I still have some sticking up here. There's several millimeters worth of travel that it goes inside. Um, and obviously there's going to be more going out there. So uh, I believe we have our, our uh, appropriate uh, back focus. So I'm just going to screw off the cap. Check my glass. Uh, I do see a couple uh, 
spots. So let me grab some compressed air and uh, let's clean this off. Okay, so I just have a little bit of dust on the optics or on the glass here. So I'm just using a regular uh, compressed air. Uh, don't shake it and don't tip it upside down because uh, you don't want uh, you know that that uh, that moisture associated with it. So just real real light. Take my glasses off. Yeah. All right. We got all the dust off. So now we will I'm gonna lock down that right there. So, so there, you know, it's gonna it's gonna stop hard when it gets down to the top of the focal reducer, but you do have this little screwlet here. Uh, you know, it's a locking screw, and you can unlock it or you know back that screw out a little bit, and that allows you to rotate uh, the focuser as you as you need. So. Uh, I like to keep everything as close to uh, perpendicular with my dovetail uh, down here. So my dovetail is right here. So if I go, because I I want I don't want to bind anything. So I want my cable to come down. These are DB nines. They screw in, so they won't have any problem. And I want to be able to come down this way as opposed to go up and over and all these all those good things. So I'm going to uh, lock that down. Now if you noticed uh, in the unboxing video, let me get back down into the frame. Uh, we have our focusing knobs, right? So we have our two locking uh, lugs as well as the focus no focusing knob. Uh, you know, it did come with the nice uh, shiny aluminum uh, replacements. Uh, I like the look of the black as opposed to the shiny aluminum. Uh, personal preference. This clearly sitting so high, uh, you know, replacing these it's not a you know wasn't required. Uh, those are uh, for other models that have taller uh, knobs and so when you're spinning this on especially with the motor and everything uh, it could hit those so you pop those off put those replacements on uh, gives you the lower profile so that you can spin this thing on and uh, not have any issues um, but I personally like uh, the look and feel of the black ones uh, you know they're they're rubberized uh, or you know, this one's rubberized. I believe these are just plastic, um, but they've got a little texture to them. Uh, they just feel better to me, especially out there in the dark. Um, I probably could see the aluminum better uh, in the dark, but uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave the the stock ones on here for now. Um, so I'm going to spin this around. And let me lock that back in so that the dust cover doesn't come off. Uh, I have to get my camera back on there. Okay, so that's clearly going to be uh, a little bit of an issue. Um, because I like my camera to be in the same plane. So, um, 
let me unlock this. Uh, just like on this one, I had the little Allen keys to lock it onto the extension tube. Uh, that little insert is Excuse me here. Uh, there's a, that little insert that allowed me to screw this on here. Uh, it's also locked in with these Allen keys. So So again, that's you know I'm using the dovetail as my uh, you know, maybe not um, let me check something real quick. So there's that little insert I was talking about right there. I just want to. Uh, Put that on here. And I'm going to lock this in. trying to do it with the everything on here clearly you saw I just wasn't able to uh, uh, get to that one Allen screw so let me, let me lock this down one last look down in there to make sure now I'm just taking one last look down so I'm tightening this last uh, Allen screw just to make sure that uh, we are good to go for uh, dust. And I'll put this back on there. I am perpendicular with my dovetail, as close as I can anyways. Uh, yeah. get back down here so as you can see that took uh, no time at all you know I had to take time to explain everything and every, and all that and we are at uh, about 30 37 minutes of recorded video obviously uh, with editing and everything it'll be a little bit shorter but uh, you know just to get it on here and get everything figured out on my spacing uh, yeah we should be good uh, so I'm not sure if I need to keep that locked or unlocked that's going to lock me in let's see okay I still have travel okay um, so now we just need to get everything else hooked up. So we have our, our hand controller, uh, the Mini V2. We have our uh, DB9. Uh, connection to run from here to the hand controller uh, USB cable to go from the hand controller to uh, in this case my hub 
or your PC. And then a temperature sensing, a temperature sensor. Uh, so the key for me is going to be where am I going to mount the hand controller? Oh, and I forgot. We have uh, the power, 12 volt power supply. Uh, it's 120 volt uh, transformer, 12 volt DC on the on the end. Um, so I need to figure out where on here I'm going to mount it, and then. Uh, get everything run so uh, yeah I might need to go don't want to go here hmm. no. Now this this is one of those things where you know you you need to uh, you need to figure out what works for you. Um, in my particular case, I like having everything on one side. Is it causing any flexure or any type of issue because I'm putting all of these? You know, these things are relatively light, um, but I actually already have. Oh, sorry, scroll a moment. Um, I can put, you know, I like to keep everything over here, that way I'm not having to walk to that side, you know, when I'm hooking everything up or you know, trying to plug stuff in or I'm troubleshooting a problem, you know, I want everything on one side if I can so that it, it just, it, it just makes it easier for me. Um, but like I said, if, if that's causing me any flexure issues or or anything like that, I'm not sure yet. So we will uh, we'll see where we're at. I need to readjust this one right here. Uh, but I get a piece of Velcro because I already have from something else that was on here previously. I believe it was a hub unit. Um, I should be able to use that and plug in here. Don't think I want the DB9 going through there because this is where my controller. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. As you can see, I already have a piece of the uh, industrial Velcro right here, um, so I could reuse that. I'll put my unit here. Um, USB could come up this way as well as the power so that everything would come back over here uh, or I could put the DB9 connection there and have that running back here uh, but because of the size of that I'm trying to get that back there uh, I'm thinking the USB is probably going to be better um, you know I can drop it down a little bit I think I think that might actually work for me. Um, you know, I just don't want to be in the way of my dew heater control being able to plug in uh, extras if I need it, as well as my RJ45 connection here. So I'm going to have to run everything in the back down to my cable run. Um, and yeah, this this. You know, like I said, this is a uh, a spare camera I have. It's just here to act as a uh, dust cover. Uh, so this the camera that I normally do put on here, which it's actually done over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, put that back on here. Give my give me another piece of that industrial uh, Velcro, uh, and we'll get this thing mounted up. Okay, so I'm back. First thing I want to do is get this off of here. Alright, 
so I got my normal imaging camera back on there. So now I'm going to, I thought I was going to put it there, but uh, I just don't, I, I don't feel comfortable putting cables back there. Uh, so I'm going to take this off and put, uh, if I can get it off. That's all right. Um, I'm just going to put it You know what? For now, I'm going to put it on the top. Um, you know, I have some temporary uh, Velcro. Might actually That, that's going to work. Um, for now, I'm going to use my piggyback mount here. Uh, as a temporary. And I'll just uh, throw it on there. And then, uh, once I make sure everything's working, I will reroute my cables. And uh, try to find... Uh, someplace a little bit better to uh, to mount that, but for now, let's go ahead and get that on there. Then I will go and get uh, you know a zip tie or a Velcro uh, cable tie, and uh, I'll tighten that up uh, before I take this outside. First thing is my uh, temperature probe. Uh, that appears to clip in right there. So for now, I'm just going to drape that back there. The other thing we have is the power cord. And again, I'm going to drape that back over here and the USB cord. And I'll drape that over there. And lastly our uh, serial cable. And what are we going to do? We're going to drape it over that side. Alright, so let me turn this around. Got all of our items right here. I'm just going to drape them up here. All right. So hopefully you can see this better than uh, when I did my setup video outside. You can see those 3M cable guides right here. Um, this bottom one is for anything that's going to the lower half of the mount. Uh, so I don't want this one congested. Uh, so this one, the only thing that's going to go in here is my power connection. Um, we're going to get that out. That, that is my temperature power connection, which is right here. So for now, we're gonna, just going to come in behind and just pop it in and then I'll run this up like I've done with the others I'll go to the lower mount and just have it up here um, now that is going to pose a little bit of a problem because I'll need to get to this uh, this one but nothing we can't figure out. So the rest of this, uh, with the exception of that one, can 
all go behind those guys. And just pull them through. Now I can just tuck them inside that cable guy that's getting a little crowded. I add any more gear to this thing and I'm going to need to add more cable guides. And this one is my USB that's going to come up here to my hub. And I can tighten these up with some cable because this one's just a little bit too too thick here. So I will grab some Velcro uh, cable ties when I go to secure this up here. And then we have our uh, temperature probe. Uh, that, I'm not sure where I'm going to want to put that. Um, I want to keep it away from the two heater, but I also don't want to put it around the cables. Uh, just in case there is some induced uh, temperature. So that for now I am going to just use one of these old twist ties. thinking about it. I'll just go ahead and use a twist tie for these other two. Now, again, this is just a temporary solution. Um, to one, make sure everything works and then I don't have to disassemble it and send it back to get repaired. Uh, and two because I do want to move this uh, you know clearly these cables are going to route a different way um, you know especially if I move it to that side uh, who knows how it's going to end up being in the end uh, so this is just a temporary uh, for right now but I should have my USB cable here let me get that hooked up. Alright, so I got my power. Power to the camera. That guy's good. I think we're good to go. Um, so, you know, all total with having to go and to the other room and grab stuff, uh, we're looking at uh, you know 50 minutes. Uh, you know, clearly I took the time to uh, measure everything and. Yep. The only thing I'm going to want to do is just back this out a little bit. Yeah. Top end. All right. So I've set this to about mid travel. Uh, that gives me plenty of room uh, forward and back. When I go out there and I go to, I'll have to do a rough, you know, I'll use the uh, batten off mask, uh, get a focus with uh, the primary dish and this setup, I'll lock it down and then this thing will take over once I uh, get it all configured in SGP. So with that, 
I'm going to um, wish you a good day. Uh, hopefully I have some clear skies tonight, but I wish you clear skies. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, ring that bell. You know the deal. Um, have a good one.